Well, those that watch the channel, they'll know that just recently I bought this semi-universal dividing head. And it was only a cheapie. I think it was $360 odd dollars on eBay. And look, all in all, it seems a pretty good little thing. Now, my friend Bruce Witham over in Perth from Gem Trek, Gem Tech Trek, <laughs> um, get her out, Bruce, get her out. Um, he was saying that with these um, universal or semi-universal dividing heads, it's a good opportunity to pull them apart every so often, service them. He said, don't put all a heap of grease inside here, just use oil. And there's another couple of things here that I'd like to address. Now, when we, when we bring this handle up here, you can see a little pin, it's a tapered pin, pops into that hole there when we line it all up. There we go. So that's in there. So we know that this main head now can't move. There's a hole every 15 degrees, there's 24 holes here. And But what I'd like to address is when we have a look here, that's on the shaft itself. So that little bit of backlash there, when you look at a dividing plate here, um, that can be the difference between a whole hole if you get it a little bit wrong. Um, and we can put it in one hole here and one hole there. And I'm not sure which plate that's on. So anyway, we're going to follow Bruce's advice and we're going to pop this thing apart. And there's a few things to tidy up on it. I'd like to get rid of that backlash. These these brass screws here there's one here that's got a nice oh not a bad finish on the bottom but on this outside here there's a oh very rough rough sawn finish looks like in china they got one of the dogs to eat it off before they ate the dog <laughs> but look these these brass wedges they actually come in and clamp around here so when you're tilting the head um, there's a dovetail you can see a little dovetail in the side here. So when you do these bolts up here, it actually pulls those wedges in tight. And there must be another little wedge inside here too, I'd say. So just follow along. We'll have a bit of a muck around and I don't really know what I'm doing, but that's never ever stopped us before. So we're gonna work our way, <laughs> work our way through this little thing and um, We'll have a bit of fun with it, hopefully. But first off, I think I might just pull this um, pull this mechanism off. I believe there's a backlash adjustment in behind here. I don't know that. I've just that's what I've been told. So So that little handle, it's an alloy handle, and you can turn it at 90 degrees and let it snap in. So if you want to just turn it, you can you can bring it out, let it sit back so you can go round and round around. So now this little spring here, that holds tension on the whole show, and this little screw here, that holds the the difference between these two plates, if I can loosen this off, and you can space these plates out, then when you when you have it where you want it, you can turn this little plate around, this little spring around, and that'll lock it in position. So a lot we, we have to get this spring out, but um, it'll it locks the position of this one in comparison to that one, not anywhere else so so I'll loosen this off I'll see if I can pop this spring out of the way there we go simple as that and that's our two two fingers just to let us know where we're going so we can work out where we're heading I might just tighten this little screw up. I'll bring them around so they're close together to support each other. 
here. There, there we go. I'll just nip that up. That's a um, it's a tapered head, countersunk screw, so it's centralised as it comes in. So that's fine. Now this dividing plate. You get three dividing plates with this. Now the one that's on it when I bought it was 37, 38, 41, 43, 47, 49. I've got the others tucked away at the moment so I can have a tidy bench. So that's always good if you can have a tidy bench. Doesn't happen all that often in my shed, but anyway. We don't have to talk about that. And there you go. Okay, this must be the backlash adjustment people have been telling me about. There's a sneaky little oiler in here. And this must be the backlash adjustment. That is four millimetre. Yep. We're going to strip all this right down just to see what's inside, really. And clean out any, if there's any sand or anything like that, we'll... Okay. So you can see that shaft dropping and raising. So that's how they're adjusting the backlash. So there is backlash adjustment there. Keep in mind that this is fixed here, so any movement we get on this fella here oh, Okay, as I wind that, I'm winding the worm out, it's jacking it off, so not to worry, we'll fix that when we go back together. You can see the eccentric. But it is gritty. You can see clean finger, black finger. That's grit, it's not grease. These are Chinese tools, they do the job for us hobbyists, but you do have to deal with them, I believe. I have a, um, if I just turn this a bit, I have a rotary table over here, and I've never pulled that apart, and I bought that at a swap meeting one time, so I believe I should do that. And there's the worm. Okay, so there's a ball, and there's a nylon bush at this end. So the nylon bush must sit against there. That would probably be a good opportunity to make a brass one, I would think. I don't know yet, but we'll work it out. Yeah, that's just a little, little plastic bush. And it's dirty so we knew that that's why we're here having a look okay this is our zero reference point can you see that you can just see a little tag there at zero so we'll get that I'll get the right Allen key and we'll get that out of our way we have a oh a point of interest Troy AM was telling me this here is for bringing your other your tail stock centre up and there's one on this side here as well you can bring your tail stock into there and by bringing that into there it's easy just to set your centre height so I didn't know that Troy told me that alright what we might do I 
can't find my ratchet. I've taken it somewhere for a job and I don't know what I've done with it. So It won't be far away. It'll just be sitting there looking at me somewhere. So I've got the trusty spark plug socket. <laughs> Bloody rough. Now, one thing is when when these when this is tight, there's thread sticking out through the end here. And in mechanical stuff, if that's sticking out, it can get bumped. Then you need to pull it out one time. You can't. So these washers are pretty pissy looking. If I can hold this in place, I'm just holding that brass nut. And that's a that's a little wedge that holds this tight but that washer be hard to find a cheaper one really cheap shit anyway we might make a couple of washers for this i think and i'd like to dress this make this nice and neat looks like there's a little little screw mark there as well i don't know what that's about This one's finished better. But anyway, we'll make them both the same. There's, there's a mark there too, so perhaps that's something you're holding. We might find that out as we go. Will this lift out now? No, because we've got the dovetail there. But what it will do for us is where this spindle is, if I undo the spindle there so that turns now I had a look at this before I started pulling it apart and I thought I'll go and see if I'd have a pin spanner and I didn't have one so more ass than Jesse the elephant one of my Makita spanners fitted it so I just rounded it off a little bit because it was straight at the time so we'll pop this locking screw out I'm not sure how the shadows are going in that monitor, but anyway, well, it'll either be good or it'll be bad. So I might lock that spindle in any old hole, any port in the storm. Okay, we have a thrust. Once again, that looks dirty. Dirty for sure. Should be a hard washer coming out as well. This will turn that slow that the quality of that bearing is probably irrelevant. something like this out that locks it. I wonder what's holding that in place. We might undo this indexing plate and see if we can work it out. And this little pointer here, 
I bent that around the other day to get it in a reasonable position. Well, I think that looks like about three, is it? We'll take it out of the way in case I damage it. And drop it. Oh, and drop it twice. One more time, we've got the app trick. Sounds a bit grady, but it does turn freely. That feels gritty too. I presume we have to undo this collar here. Oh, what's that number three? These two. Three mil. Bloody trade tools should sponsor me. These um these renegade Allen keys. They're cheap as buggery, and boy are they good, they're tough. You won't bend them, and just a nice cheap tool, and I've, I have a couple of sets of them, and I've never bent one, I've never had any trouble with one at all. It's got something to do with something. You can just see the worm teeth there. That's a rack and pinion. I wonder how that comes out. Can't see anything. This looks suspicious, doesn't it? I'll have a bit of a look at that. Anything screwdriver, just give it a bit of a tap with a hammer first. There's a little grub screw here, and probably one there, I think, that I haven't noticed before. Let's explore that first, eh? Before we go wrecking everything. That's a flat point. That wasn't even tight. I must just go in there and stop that fella from buggering up on us. Now will this come out now? Let's see if I can wind him out.
looks okay. Yeah, we'll see if this makes any difference to here. Oh, look at that. Pays to have a good look, doesn't it? grit. I don't know where they put this stuff together. You can just see a little little detent there and I'm thinking that that might give us adjustment on this fella. Maybe. We'll work it out. So you have a tapered roller bearing at this end, so that takes any thrust that's coming in from your spindle, or from your tail stock I should say. And it looks like, yep there's a little screw in here. wonder is that tight? No. So we won't hit on that because the teeth on the on the um, gear here will be oh they'll be on the back of the bearing. Lovely, nicely ground shaft, but we can't seem to get, I must have taken him over to the press. It looks like the bearing's starting to come. The parts seem to be, they look to be made well enough. Let's see if we can find a brand name on this bearing. It's a 32007X. a 26 and a 30.
Okay, I'm not sure whether I want to take that off or not. Um, I'll put these screws that come out of there up in here. Okay, we'll put that up the back. We'll get some tools slid out of the way. Let's have a look in here. So you can see when this screw comes through the side to lock it in position, there's a clamp inside there and that clamps onto this part of the shaft. There's another couple of Allen head screws in there. We might undo them just because we can. Take this back out of the way. It is Kelly Dog coming for a visit. Just to see what we're doing. I think we're doing it right. Okay, so that housing can come out of there. Once again, look, look at my colour of my hands from working on this thing. So that sits in there. And then when we when we do this up from the outside we clamp that onto that shaft so it doesn't want to move and that's it there's nothing else in there that's all she wrote Yeah, we're getting grey dust everywhere, so must be time to pop her out, I think. I think. I saw something drop there, a bit of dust or something. Oh, there's the other side of the thrust bearing. So there's the housing. Oh, grit. Look at this. Can you see that? Bloody unreal. Okay, I'm glad Bruce suggested doing that or I um I may not have done it. I might have just put it into into service. You can also see all the black coming off there. So yep, 360 bucks. It's going to do the job for me, I know that, but we're going to do it on our terms. We're going to give it a tidy up, give it a big clean up, and yeah, we'll pop him back together. Bruce was telling us, don't fill all this up with grease. Here we can just oil them. Put oil in and that's enough for the slow turning you do and just pull it apart from time so to time. Bruce and was saying it, so. um, about pulling it apart and oiling it and not using grease, is a grease any swath and that that can get anywhere around it will stick to it. And so we're going to take his advice. Um, like it's going to be an inside environment. It's not like one of my old tractors that's out in the mulga. Um, it's a bit hard not to put grease on stuff though when you <laughs> when you're used to putting it on. So so anyway, I'll stop rambling. That's the strip the video. I'll strip the. Um, semi-universal indexing head video 
we've got a pile of parts all around the bench here now. So that's all right. Other projects on the go, that little vice, I'm halfway, well, I'm not even halfway through. So we'll clean everything up. We'll address any issues. We'll, we'll fix these little plugs. We might make a couple of washes from under the heads when we work out how thick they are. Now the tail stock has these pissy little washes as well. So we're going to, um, we're going to hop into there. Now, where that hole come from there, it must be somewhere in the manufacture because there's nothing coming in that hole there. So you can hear the cockatoos in the background. The cockatoos flew in this morning from somewhere. So. Okay, that's it. I'll address all this. I'll clean all this up and um, we'll get all this grease out and we'll, we'll just... We'll just make it serviceable.